Jesus spoke of a future time period called the end of the age. Not the end of time, not the end of the world, but a specific sequence of events just prior to and including Jesus' second coming to earth. Jesus, as well as many of the prophets such as Isaiah, Jeremiah, Zechariah, Joel, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Amos, and Daniel went into great detail about this turbulent period of time prior to his return and points to writings in the book of Daniel to clarify the details of this seven-year period. Here's the timeline. There's the first three and a half years, which will include false prophets, mass deception, war, uprisings, betrayal by relatives and friends, earthquakes, and famine. A military invasion of Jerusalem right at the halfway point, led by this really bad guy the scriptures refer to by many different names. The man of lawlessness, the little horn, the man of sin, the lawless one, the Assyrian, the king of the north, son of perdition, the beast, yes, the antichrist. Once he and his army take control of Jerusalem, the Bible tells us this will be a worldwide game changer. Satanically deceptive miracles, severe persecution, plunder, mass destruction, captivity, rape, beheadings. It all sounds really scary, but here's the good news. Jesus tells us in Matthew 24, immediately after this terrible time of distress, the sun, moon, and stars will go dark. Then there he is, Jesus, the Son of Man coming on the clouds. This is the event we've all been waiting for, our blessed hope. How do we know we're getting close to this time period? The Bible actually gives quite a few clues. It will begin sometime after Israel reunites to become a nation again. Check. It will happen after Jewish people regather to their original land. Check. It will involve a land dispute between Israel and the surrounding nations regarding Jerusalem. Check. It will somehow include an effort to erect a new Jewish temple and sacrificial system in Jerusalem. Check. Unfortunately, it will occur at a time when people have turned away from the truth of the Bible in mass to follow all kinds of crazy ideas. Check, check, and check. So the question we've all been asking ourselves, when will Jesus return to gather up believers? We don't know the exact day. Some say before the seven year period, some say during the seven years, some say after. Are these questions important? Of course they are. But is the timing of his return worth dividing the body of Christ? No. The question we should be asking is this. Are we awake as the scriptures command us to be? 1 Thessalonians 5, 6 says, Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Are we asleep in a state of idleness, focusing more about timing of our Savior's return than the joy for the world that he will bring? Are we asleep to our purpose, waking others up to this truth? Are we being watchful and sober, not indulging in spiritual apathy and keeping our natural desires and appetites for the things of this world within boundaries? We argue and wrestle and fight over the timing issue so much that we forget the biggest thing of all. The bridegroom is coming. A wedding is being planned. The kingship of Jesus will be established here on earth and God's enemies will be removed. All signs indicate it's going to be soon. We don't know the exact day he's coming, but we sure better pay attention to the signs of the season of his return as he instructed. Are we taking his instructions seriously? Are we spreading his message with the urgency it deserves? We were given the details in advance for a reason. The Bible warns that those who refuse to love the truth, the word of God, will fall for the deception, 2 Thessalonians 2.10. Maybe it's time we take another look and read God's prophetic instructions with new eyes and an open heart.